the minister's company, Global Health Imports, while the minister was a partner, was sharing a P.O. box with none other than an individual involved in cocaine trafficking. Oh. So in short, what they tried to do was to steal contracts that should be awarded to legitimate indigenous businesses. This is cultural appropriation that is completely disgusting yes. and it is something else. It's called fraud. Honorable member. Mr. Speaker, what is it going to take for this Prime Minister to fire the Minister from Edmonton, the Minister of Employment? It seems that every day there are new revelations surrounding this scandal-plagued minister. And with each of these new revelations, it is crystal clear to seemingly everyone but the minister and the prime minister that that minister is about the last person in this house who should be sitting around the cabinet table. Let's look at the facts. The Minister of Employment was a partner with one Stephen Anderson in a shady PPE company called uh, Global Health Imports. This is a company that has been sued by multiple clients uh, and has been ordered by Alberta courts to pay back $7.8 million wow. for ripping wow. off clients. Those are judgments of Alberta courts. Not only that, the minister almost certainly violated the Conflict of Interest Act. Uh, more specifically, the Conflict of Interest Act is clear that a minister of the Crown shall not be involved in the operations of a business. Text messages reveal that someone named Randy from Global Health Imports was intricately involved in the business during the very same time that the Minister of Employment sat in Cabinet. Uh, more specifically, those text messages reveal that this Randy from Global Health Imports was involved in a half a million dollar shakedown of a California-based client that had ordered PPE equipment. At the behest of Ra this Randy, the client, the Gowie Group, transferred half a million dollars to Global Health Imports. The PPE was never delivered, and the Gowie Group has commenced legal action claiming, among other things, wire fraud. Now, the Minister of Employment says he's not that randy, uh, except for the fact that at all material times, the Gowie Group believed that the randy in the text messages is the Minister of Employment. The minister's business partner, Stephen Anderson, has admitted that uh, there is no one from Global Health Imports named Randy other than the minister. The text messages reference Randy as a partner. We know that the minister had been a partner. The text messages place this Randy in Vancouver. Turns out the minister of employment was in Vancouver at the same time. And no one can find this other Randy. There's no wow. plausible explanation as to who this other Randy could be. Weird. The only reasonable inference that can be drawn is that the Randy in the tax messages is the Minister of Employment. Yep. And therefore, the Minister of Employment broke the law and violated the Conflict of Interest Act, and on that basis alone should be out of cabinet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But, Mr. Speaker, there's more. Uh, recently, we learned uh, that Global Health Imports, while the minister was an active partner in the company, made two bids for federal contracts in which the company held itself out as a wholly owned indigenous company. What? Now, the problem with that is that it isn't a wholly owned indigenous company because neither Anderson or 
the minister, are indigenous. What they did, what the minister did, what his business partner Anderson did, is clear. They tried to take advantage of the government's indigenous procurement program to obtain government contracts. In short, in short what they tried to do was to steal contracts that should be awarded to legitimate indigenous businesses. This is cultural appropriation that is completely disgusting yes. and it is something else. It's called fraud. Follow it's called money. fraud. Follow the money. And it's, it raises questions of potential criminality involving the minister. Now, the minister says he had no idea oh, yeah, that right. it's all Anderson who did this behind his back. I wish to re-emphasize, Mr. Speaker, that the minister was a 50% shareholder, was one of two business partners, so to, for the minister to claim that he had no idea that they were trying to rig the system to steal government contracts uh, isn't believable, but it is even less believable when in the face of uh, what has come to light, which is that this minister has a long-standing track record of misrepresenting his indigenous status. Wow. Uh, let, and, and in that regard, I, I would note that this is a minister, according to news reports, who as far back as the 2012 Liberal Convention, when he was seeking a party nomination, represented himself to be Métis. In 2015, after he was elected, the Liberal Party, in a social media post, listed the minister uh, as one of 10 Indigenous Liberal MPs wow. elected. Now, the minister said he was Métis back in 2012, but then when he got elected to this place between 2016 and 2018, he repeatedly characterized himself as a non-status Cree. Now, the minister kept referring to himself in that way, non-status non adopted Cree, I should clarify, uh, referencing his adopted great-grandmother who he claimed had Cree roots. He even touted that he had a Cree name called Strong Eagle Man. Now, when confronted about his status and the fact that he was falsely representing this, the minister has seen fit to now change his story to say, oh, he's not a non-status adopted Cree, but in fact now he's alleging that his mother is Métis and his brother is Métis. The bottom line, Mr. Speaker, is that this is a minister who continually changes his story. He misrepresents who he is. He misrepresents who he is not. Mr. Speaker, the minister is a cultural appropriator. He has tried to appropriate and represent himself as being indigenous for political gain as well as financial gain. Now, today, it's reported in the National Post that that isn't enough, that the minister's company, Global Health Imports, while the minister was a partner, was sharing a P.O. box with none other than an individual involved in cocaine trafficking. Oh, my goodness. Someone who uh, was busted by the Edmonton police in 2013 and busted again in the Dominican Republic, caught with 200 kilograms what? of cocaine. This is who 200. the minister is associated with, the minister is doing business with, or at least connected to, in terms of sharing a post office box. It really begs the question, whose company are ministers in this government keeping? And so between uh, the $7.8 million in judgments against his company, uh, the fact that he violated the Conflict of Interest Act, the fact that he has misrepresented himself as indigenous for political and financial gain, and his ties now to someone connected to cocaine, 
it begs the question again, what is it going to take for this Prime Minister to fire the Minister from Edmonton, the Minister of Employment?